sorry, a little nervous. Um, <laughs> Too close? <laughs> that helped. I, you know, I've been listening to you for many years, and the one thing you always say a lot is that we are um, on the leading edge. And I mentally get that, but I, I guess I don't emotionally get that. Because, like, today, I wake up, I get up, take a shower, have coffee, another cup, drive here to come see you. And I think to myself, how is this expanding the universe? Whereas I think part of me understands that being here from um, being a spiritual being and being part here is very helpful for that part of me. But for the part of me that's here, really, how am I in my day-to-day -day life really expanding the universe and also how are we so unique here that we're the ones to help with the expansion well if you step back a little bit and look at the bigger picture we're going to zero it right in on you in a minute but if you step back and look at the bigger picture and realize the variety of desires and beliefs and perceptions that you hold it's out of that variety and the combinations of those varieties that you come to new insights Every single day, something happens that causes you to look at things differently than you ever did before. Don't you find yourself asking questions? Why is that that way? Or how can that be? Or how could that be better? Yeah. So sometimes it feels like you don't really have a hands-on purpose in expanding the universe. Because if you're sitting and thinking, okay, I am an expander of the universe. <laughs> what direction should I take it? <laughs> what important expansion science? Well, I don't have too much background in that. Um, <laughs> uh, genetic. Uh, I don't really have too much understanding in that. Um, I'm not a very good comic. Um, <laughs> Mathematics, mm, no. Um, what's my purpose in life? What's my purpose in life? How am I meant to expand the universe? And we say, it doesn't work like that. It works that from your unique perspective, given what you've gathered around you, that within that, not diminished, not unimportant, but also not all inclusive, because you can't focus upon everything all at once. From where I stand right here, right now, there is a range of things for me to perceive that is bold enough and sufficient enough, well-stocked kitchen enough to produce within me a genuine personal desire for something beyond what's right here. So when that rocket shoots out of you, sometimes you don't feel it until it gains a little momentum then life produces another and another. In fact, you get the idea of the momentum that we were talking about earlier. So think about every time you know what you don't want and know what you do want, you send off a rocket that causes a little more momentum. So you've got a lot of momentum going on in that vortex of creation. So the more you do that, the more awareness you have of whether you are or are not up to speed with it. And that's what's producing that expansion. Esther has been enjoying so much. Jerry and Esther together have been enjoying so much the expansion of this message. Last week, or at the week before or the week before, we began offering an analogy that came from an experience that Esther had on the property in Texas. They have a beautiful man-made waterfall that trickles down a stream into a larger pond at the bottom. And the bottom has pipes that draw the water from the bottom into a pump house where it is filtered and then put back so that it aerates and it keeps the pond and the stream beautiful and clear the fish are happy Esther is happy but the water started becoming very cloudy for quite a long time 
And different people came and threw different things in the water and the fish kept surviving, but it, you still couldn't see them. Uh, Esther had purchased some fish tanks for her house and they were outside and she had several little goldfish in each one of them. And every day she would go out to see them and to feed them and they would look at her and say, help us, <laughs> help us, because they were not happy there. The temperature of the water was fluctuating too much and the raccoon visited nearly every night and terrorized all of them. And, <laughs> and Esther knew that she wanted to move them. So she asked Tracy and Kate and Luke if they wanted to come and move the goldfish with her. And Esther explained how some years ago they had bought some goldfish at the pet store and they'd brought them in the plastic bags from the pet store. And when Jerry and Esther put these goldfish into this beautiful clear pond, the fish literally leaped like dolphins in the water. They were so joyful to be in this bigger space. It was like watching Nemo. <laughs> And Jerry and Esther held that vivid in their minds. And so Esther is saying to the children, and when we take the fish over and we drop them in, they're going to be so glad to get out of this confined space that they're going to leap for joy. So they put them in a pail. They fished them out with great care and took them over to the pond. And when they dropped them in, they just disappeared into the muck, <laughs> never to be seen again. And Esther said, we've got to do something about this stream. It's not the way I remember it. So now different people are coming to help make the water clear. And it is decided that the pump is not working properly. So they replace the pump. So the water is being drawn into the pump, but the pump is not putting the water back into the pond because the pipes that are bringing the water back in are clogged, not just clogged. They're like permanently clogged. The caliche soil from neglect and just time had completely closed those Pipe. So the water is being drawn into the filter and the filter is trying to put it back into the pond, but it can't. So the pressure in the filter is just building up and up and up and up. Esther stood there and looked at it instead of eight pounds of pressure that was natural. There were 40 pounds of pressure. It was scary. Esther was afraid to be in there with it. And so then they were talking about it. Well, we just need some new pipes. We need new pipes. So they laid new pipes on top of the ground. No point in burying them until you're sure your concept is right. They laid new pipes, cut a hole right in the side of the building, brought the pipes right over and right away, the water is flowing. And within a few days of getting it all established, now the water is beautiful and clear again. And so this analogy has been so helpful in us talking to you because sometimes you have beliefs that are not allowing you to receive what you've been asking for. You're asking, your pumps are working, you're drawing your desire into the vortex. The vortex filter is spinning, keeping the good stuff, only keeping the good stuff and wanting to give it back to you. But it's in the giving it back to you. It's in the you realizing it. It's in you allowing it. It's in you being vibrationally up to speed with it, you see. And so a new analogy was born. A wonderful new analogy. If your pipes are clogged, no big deal. Just lay some new pipes. Don't worry about what's going on. Don't worry about what your old beliefs are. Just think the new thoughts, you see. So that's an expansion. That was an exciting expansion. In just a short period of time, lots of people are understanding that they don't have to keep digging out that old stuff. So many men with so many different pieces of equipment came to the property and tried to clear out those old pipes. They were snaking it with all kinds of things, poking it with all kinds of things, trying to chisel out that long built up residue of beliefs that were not serving them, so to speak, to no avail. It was pointless. It was futile. It was unnecessary. There is so much an easier way. You don't have to figure out how you got to where you are. All you have to do is figure out where you are and where you want to be. You don't have to figure out why the pipes got clogged, who wasn't checking them often enough, how it got so bad before it was brought to someone's attention. You don't have to figure any of that out. All you have to figure out is, Hey, pond's cloudy. Don't want that. What can we do to help it be less cloudy? And more clear, what can we do? It's a pretty simple remedy, you see. It always is a simple remedy. And that's that expansion, that constant expansion. You're constantly standing in a place that you have not been before, 
with the desires that you've been accumulating for a long time the desires still calling you and you figuring out how to let the calling reach you you see that's what the expansion of the universe is all about It's what the evolution of every species is about and our physical friends often like you diminish yourself by saying what I'm doing can't be that important it cannot be important enough to cause the expansion of the universe but it is you see so then when you stand here in your physical body accepting that what you want and what you think is important enough to cause the expansion of the universe and you get into that better feeling place where you start realizing you start realizing some of what you've been asking for isn't it interesting oh we like saying this to you so much isn't it interesting oh we're just gonna enjoy it before we spit it out to you isn't it interesting oh. <laughs> we're all having a party wait a little bit <laughs> isn't it interesting that your personal most selfish interests are at the basis of this expanding universe oh mm. but you see you haven't let what you want be important enough to be the basis of the expanding universe but oh we so want you to know that it is and you're not just blocking it because you're not letting